Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna. Ina alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. Welcome to another session of our Sunnah Followers Tawhi class. And for this class, we're going to start a new series. Uh, we started it yesterday, and the new series is entitled The Muslim Personality. And this is great because since Ramadan has ended, you do not want to stop the process of changing the condition of yourself. We want to continue to evolve as Muslims and get closer to Allah and become more righteous and more spiritual, you know, up until the next Ramadan so we can do a comparison. And so the way to continue to change, you know, the condition of ourselves is by changing our personality, changing our character, changing our behavior and our mor morality. Okay, so that's why we're going to be focusing in on this topic. And just so everyone knows, the book that I am using for this class is entitled, here is a picture of you guys can see it on, uh, see me on Facebook. This is the book, The Muslim Personality. And uh, it's not available on his website yet, but this book was compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. Okay, and I did put on the um, uh, Facebook a notification and Zoom and everything, uh, the link to his website, atleonline.com. It's not there yet. The book is not available yet there, but it will be soon. The Muslim Personality, this is one of the best books he's ever written. It's new, he just published it. This should be an, a part of every Muslim's library because once you develop the personality and the character of a Muslim, in turn, you will evolve un into a believer. And that should be the ultimate goal in this world of each and every one of us. We want to adapt, you know, the personality and the character of a believer so that we can be successful when we're in that grave, okay? And yesterday I gave an introduction to this course and we talked about a couple of um, characteristics that we all need to be working on as Muslims. And I did put together a quiz for you. Let's look at the quiz. It's only five questions. Question number one, we spoke about sincerity of intentions. And we also spoke about sincerity of intentions during the month of Ramadan. But how does sincerity of intentions impact a person's personality? Can anyone tell me that? How does sincerity of intentions impact your a person's personality? Who would like to answer that? Take the mic. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Leila. Wa alaikum salam, Brother Haji. So I'll start us off. I'll try. Um, so one of the ways... Uh, uh, sincerity of intentions uh, impacts uh, one's personality. Uh, is it helps uh, the believing Muslim to understand his or her purpose in life, and uh, and also helps us to uh, check our intentions before carrying them out. Uh, are they? To, you know, we need to ask the questions: Are they in tandem or in conformity with the Noble Quran and the authentic Hadith? Mashallah. Wait a minute, I'm, I'm trying to run. Calls us. <laughs> Check our intentions before performing any actions to ensure that they are upon in tandem. 
the Quran and Sunnah. He, this is a, a beautiful answer. Beautiful answer, guys. Exactly. You know, how does sincerity of intentions impact your personality? Well, number one, it'll help you as a believer to understand what his or what your purpose in life is. And we talked about this yesterday. Oftentimes, many of us forget what our purpose is. It's so easy for us to become uh, uh, so engulfed in the life of this world that we forget what we're supposed to be doing, why we were created, what we're supposed to do here. But if you keep your, your intention sincere, you will never forget your purpose because you will be constantly checking yourself before you do any deeds, any actions. You want to make sure that they're upon the Quran and Sunnah. You know, and I'm telling you guys, this, if it's part of your, your personality, it just comes natural. Before I do anything, wait a minute, wait a minute, what does the law say about this? What does the prophet say about this? And I do see it with a lot of you. SubhanAllah, your coworker invites you uh, to a gathering. The first thing you're going to do is say, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Is this something that I should be doing? That's a person that has sincerity of intentions. They want to check to make sure if, is what I'm doing in contradiction to Islam, or is this something that is okay in Islam? You know, if, if whatever I'm doing, am I going to do it the way the prophet would do? What would Aisha say? What would the prophet say? What would the companions do in these situations? So many of us, we don't think that way because we don't have sincerity of intentions. You know, good answer, Brother Haji. Anyone else would like to add to that? How else? Yes. Go ahead. Um, basically, you try to purify your intentions by solely pleasing Allah with everything you do. And um, the Prophet Wasallam said that when um, you have intentions to please Allah on going on a journey, or um, not a journey, a hijra, um, solely for Allah, you'll be rewarded for it. But if, if you have intentions for some other worldly purpose, like maybe to get a woman, then that's what you'll get rewarded for. Okay, so basically make a law the head of all our actions. Keep the focus in life. Keep uh, a person who has sincerity, uh, sincerity, of it, uh, sincerity as part of their personality. This is a person that keeps a law first and foremost in his or her heart and mine again it's the same thing like brother haji said so you want to what would a law say about this what would a law think of this okay anyone else any other answers about how sincerity uh impacts your personality my personality is one that is will consist of always keeping a law first and foremost putting him before everyone and everything <clears throat> my personality is that before i engage in any action I'm going to make sure that whatever the action is, I'm doing it the way a law legislated and I'm not contradicting any of his laws and rules. These are two great answers. Anyone else want to add? Okay, if no more additions, okay, let's go to number two. There's other things y'all could have said too, but these were great. Okay, let's look at question number two. We also spoke yesterday as to how the Muslim personality is one that calls upon a law under certain circumstances. What circumstances does the Muslim who has the perfect Muslim character, what circumstances does the, does the Muslim call upon a law? Who can answer that? Under what type of circumstances? Give me one, somebody. Yeah, the Muslim uh, personality uh, calls upon Allah in good times and bad times. Okay, when times are good, when times are good, how does he call upon a law when times are good? He does it by doing what? By doing good deeds. Um, yes, yeah, just solely for the sake of Allah alone. Okay, by thanking a law. By thanking Allah. When times are good, he calls upon a law by giving thanks to him. For the goodness 
he or she is receiving. So even when times are good, I'm going to say, oh, mashallah, thank you, Allah, for giving me this happiness. Thank you, Allah, for this beautiful Ramadan I had. Thank you, Allah, you know, for giving me this, this moment of joy. So even in good times, he's going to call upon Allah. And how does he call up, and, and um, how does he call upon Allah in bad times? Um, in during bad times, he remains patient with uh, anything that's been, um, you know. Uh, okay, he asks a lot for patience. What else? He, he asks a lot, a lot for, for patience. Go ahead. He also asks a lot for uh, guidance. Guidance. Good job. What else? And for help. And help. Good job. Okay, and this is something that we need to do when times are bad. The Muslim personality calls upon Allah for help. We call upon Allah for guidance. We call upon Allah for support. You know, we don't call upon man. You know that a man will let you down, but Allah will never let you down. He's always going to be here. You're going to be like a lot of these sisters were. Look at Sister Omar here. She went through one of the most trying times of her life. She was tested in one of the trying times of her life. But what did she do? She didn't complain. She wasn't uh, panicking. She wasn't sitting there, woe is me. She didn't take off her hijab. She didn't stop being a Muslim. She didn't run to the hills. She called upon Allah for help. She called upon Allah for guidance and support. And Allah answered her, gave her that help she needed, that guidance she needed. He, Allah took her out of that bad situation and gave her a place, a, a, a situation of peace and comfort now. That's how the believer acts. The person that has the true Islamic personality, the true Muslim with the correct personality behaves that way when times are bad. Okay, any other circumstances in which the, the Muslim personality will call upon Allah? In good times, and bad times, any other times? Or any other circumstances? That's when you're in need and Allah says, um, if you call on him, he will an answer. Okay, uh, go, what's another, yes, yeah, what's another need? Good, bad, one more. Oh, that's, I guess that was going under bad, right? Sickness, uh, what about oh, in sick. sickness? Even in sickness, he or she remains patient and calls upon Allah for acceptance. This is something powerful because we never know what Allah has in store. Allah knows what's best for us. A lot of people get sick. They make dua. Their dua is not answered. They still have the sickness. That's because maybe Allah knows something that you don't know. So how does the Muslim personality call upon Allah when he or she is sick, you've been diagnosed with a disease, and the doctor tell you there is no cure, the doctor tells you you only have six months to live, the believing Muslim asks Allah for acceptance. Oh Allah, give me the ability to accept your decree. And I hope this is answering the question of the sister here on Facebook. One of the sisters on Facebook, she's new. Uh, she sent me an email this morning saying that she's been diagnosed with a type of cancer uh, that is not curable. And the doctor has only given her no more than three months to live. And the sister asked me what advice I can give to her. This is the advice I can give to you. Number one, alhamdulillah. There's good in everything. The good in this situation is that you have knowledge of something that many people don't have knowledge of. And that is, you don't know exactly when you're going to die, but you know that you're dying. That's a big thing. The fact that you know that you're dying. And a law has given you three months, three months to clean up 
whatever mess you've made of your life. I don't know you because you're new. Uh, you just found me on Facebook. I don't even know if you're going to come back because a lot of people uh, hear about me and know of me, but they don't listen to me unless something bad happens. Now you want to hear what the lady, crazy lady got to say. Well, what I got to say is, alhamdulillah, how do you call upon Allah in this situation? You remain patient with his decree and you thank him. Thank him every day for letting you know that your time is about to expire. Because a lot of people, it happens in the blink of an eye. They don't have the chance. They don't have the chance to, uh, to make amends for the bad things they've done. You have the chance. It didn't happen in the blink of an eye with you, sister. So that's some mercy from Allah. You got three months to clean up whatever you've done. If you weren't wearing hijab, if you were smoking, drinking, doing bad, fornicating, adulterating, Muslim in name, but not in practice. Allah out of his mercy, has given you three months to make right the wrongs that you have done in your life to yourself and to others, whoever you've harmed in your lifetime. You got three months to make it right. That's a blessing that very few of us get. Most of us, it's gone in the blink of an eye. We didn't have no time. So you right your wrongs and you thank Allah for giving you that chance and you renew your commitment to him every day that you are left on these, this earth. And you pray to him for forgiveness and you pray to him for acceptance of his decree. And if you succeed in that, nothing is left for you but paradise. SubhanAllah. Paradise. Because you had the chance that most people don't get. So your chances of paradise are greater than most people who die. Because you have the chance, sister. So that's what crazy Layla Nasheba has to say to you. Alhamdulillah for your situation. Nobody likes to die. But if I were to die, I'd like to know that it was coming so I can really tighten up my prayers, clean up my mouth, make right whatever wrongs I've made with my family prepare my, my wheel properly, do a lot of repenting. So there's good in everything that Allah does. Good in everything he does. This is your good. Okay, so a good example, guys, as to how the believer has a personality that calls upon Allah is even in sickness. Even in sickness, the believer sees the good and calls upon Allah for acceptance. Any other examples? Any other examples as to how the Muslim personality would call upon Allah? Okay, good job. Okay, let's look at question number three. What does it mean we talked about how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told us to keep our tongues wet with remembrance. What does it mean to when he said to keep your tongue? Because a lot of people don't understand what the Prophet Muhammad be talking about. Who can tell me what does he mean when he says keep the tongue wet with remembrance? Can somebody yes. explain to me what that phrase means? Well, with me, I, when I read it, I was like keeping their tongue wet with remembrance of Allah 
Zachary, mm -hmm. you know, praising the Lord out through the day. Always, uh, you know, just always like Zachary. And that's what I was think of it. Uh, but man, I, w I didn't, I would, I didn't hear you yesterday because I wasn't on. But okay, for me, I would feel. What does Zikr mean in English? Hey, uh, Alhamdulillah. I'm, you know, now, what does it mean in English, guys? Don't play the Arabic uh, game. That you don't don't do that. Break that remembrance down in English. You were right. It. It's but remembering a lot. But give me pure English, because when y'all throw Arabic words in, the Arabs sit here laughing at you. Thanks to Allah. Thanks to Allah. Gratitude. It's remembering a lot. Remembering. Okay, wait a minute. Hold up. Too many people talking. Different answers. One person. What about. does dicker mean in English? Remembering. Remembering. Okay. Dicker means to remember Allah, not to thank him. Okay. Shukran is thank you. Shukran right. Allah is to thank is Allah. Thank Dicker means mm -hmm. to remember Allah. Yeah, Allah. But don't play the mm -hmm. Arabic game. Y'all better speak in English. Ain't none of y'all Arabs in here. And I'm sick of these Arabs making fun of y'all. And, and by the way, you think it's funny? Get up out of here. For those of you who want to make funny of, of fun of Western Muslims, they're learning the deen. I bet you you ain't got a beard, brother. So whether you sit in here making fun of these people because they don't know, have the, they speak English. I ain't got time for these crazy men in here. Get your beardless self up out of my Facebook page. All right. So speaking English. So now let's start this again. What does it mean when the prophet said, uh, I mean, Antar, you were saying it right, but you messed up with the Arabic. What does it mean when okay, the prophet sorry. said, keep Remem your tongue wet with remembrance? Remembering a lot by it, uh, by like I ain't thinking, you know, like um, oh, well, you got me. Mad. Oh, somebody help me. I'm getting... <laughs> so, in simple terms, uh, yeah, it means apologize. just words, words of remembrance, just so, um, like Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, and this can be said whilst you're driving, whilst you're relaxing on your bed, uh, whilst you, you know, doing all all the stuff. So, yeah. Just yeah. like Sister Layla is writing, and just being conscious. Just, just think, be conscious of a lot. Think about a law throughout the day. That's all it means in simple terms. This means to think about a law throughout the day. Yeah, brother, you need to get up out of here. This means, I'm just an idiot on Facebook. This means to think about a law throughout the day. To be more conscious. Yeah, y'all need to speak in English because you got a bunch of idiots in here who want to make fun of y'all. You know, it means to be more conscious of Allah and what he likes and dislikes throughout the day. I wonder if you could have said that in English, brother. You want to make fun of these Muslims here in the West? I wonder if yo, how, how bad your English is. Could you have explained what it meant in English? No, you couldn't. So don't come in here with that. Okay, so when the prophet said, keep the tongue wet with remembrance, you know, this means to think about Allah throughout the day, to be more conscious of him and what he likes and what he dislikes. Like Brother Haji said, when you're driving or when you're doing anything, you know, what would Allah think about what I'm doing? What would Allah think about what I'm saying? If Allah saw you in here making fun of these Western Muslims speak about Islam, what would Allah say to you, brother? How does Allah think of what you're doing? That's a person who remembers Allah and keeps his tongue wet with it. Okay? Everybody understand that? Uh, okay, good job. Let's look at the next question. Question number four. Okay, now he's apologizing. Yeah. That's one thing about Layla Nasheba. When you come into Layla Nasheba's classes, trying to flow show somebody, I'm going to make you wear the egg on your face. But alhamdulillah, he, the brother's apologizing to all of y'all for making fun of y'all now. Okay, don't do that. And like I said, grow a beard, because I'm pretty sure you ain't got one. All right. Let's look at question number four. What does it mean to be justly balanced? We talked about how the Muslim personality 
is one that is justly balanced. What does that mean in plain, simple terms? Not going from um, one extreme of doing things in excess or the other, or and the other is, which is negligence and not doing anything. Just okay. having that middle course and being balanced. Okay, she said it means to adapt the middle course in all matters to not go too far to the right nor left but remain centered does everybody understand that and this is something that we all struggle with as muslims as your personality uh, develops more into that of a believer, your personal gen is gonna push you to become fanatical. He's gonna make you think that everything that you're doing is haram. He's gonna make you question every action you make. This is haram, we don't wanna do that. You don't wanna sit there, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, is this haram? I just grabbed my nose. No. You want to remain balanced. I'm not going to go too far to the right nor too far to the left. This religion has been perfected for us by a law. Most things in life are lawful. Everything is haram when it comes to worship. But if it has nothing to do with worship, everything is lawful unless a law says otherwise. And that's how you balance yourself out. I wonder, oh, oh, my finger. Oh, look at this. Don't, maybe I'm going to hell. No, most things are lawful when it comes to everyday life. So that's how you balance. Oh, uh oh, you see this? I got polka dots. Oh my God. Isn't that wrong? I'm going, ah, no, no, no. Most things are lawful when it comes to everyday life. See how I balance that out? Balance it out. Most things are lawful when it comes to everyday life. But now when it comes to worship, it's the opposite. When it comes to worship, everything is haram unless a law said otherwise, like those daggone birthdays. And I hope everybody saw the dialeel, because I get sick of that. Now y'all got the dialeel that I got for you out of the Quran and the Hadith about them stinking birthdays and telling people happy birthday. Birthday is worship. Everything is haram when it comes to worship, unless a law said otherwise. It's the opposite. Unless you can show where the prophet said wishing people happy birthday is okay. Or you can give me the hadith where the prophet said we're going to celebrate people's birthdays. I gave y'all the hadith and he clearly said don't do what them stinking Christians did by taking Jesus and making a day, setting it aside for him to glorify him. The sun don't rise and set at the birth of nobody. We don't do that as Muslims. I gave y'all the evidence. Y'all better stop that birthday crap. Even the Sufis say you don't celebrate birthdays. Come on, y'all. That's just going too far, too far to the right, to the extreme. So I want y'all to balance it out. This is how I was taught as a kid and all my life. When it comes to everyday actions, like eating, drinking, dressing, you know, working, everything is lawful unless the law says otherwise. But when it comes to worship, only worship, everything's haram unless the law said otherwise. That's how you balance yourself. But the problem is most Muslims don't know what actions of worship are. Just like a lot of you didn't know that celebrating the birth of someone is an act of worship. Y'all didn't know that. 
We have to educate ourselves a little bit more. Okay. All right. Question number five. Last question. We also spoke about how the Muslim personality is one in which he or she holds himself or herself accountable. How do we make that in simple terms? How do I hold myself accountable? How does the, the, the Muslim hold himself accountable? What does it mean, in other words, to hold yourself accountable? Anyone? Anyone? We know can this? hold ourselves accountable. Like if we tell somebody we're going to do something at a certain time, we do it. That's not really what this is talking about. And that's the answer that most Muslims would give. How does, but that's incorrect. How do we hold ourselves accountable? The Muslim personality is one in which we know that we are to be held accountable. We well, hold ourselves accountable. That we say and do. Uh, not really. To, uh, not really, not that one. That's something, this is a different, and I know this is tricky. Go ahead, Anissa, go what do you think? We, we hold ourselves accountable, first of all, knowing what Allah has want, uh, what Allah has ordered us to do. He's given us our prophet to teach us what we're supposed to do, how to eat, how to treat each other, how to dress. Holding one accountable means that you make sure that you have the calendar in your mind and your heart to know it's time to pray, you do so. It's time to fast, you do so. And you do it in a balanced manner as we talked before. Holding, holding yourself accountable means that you know you're going to have to uh, be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're going to earn what you have done. Good job. And good job, Nic uh, Nicola, too. How do we hold ourselves accountable? By being responsible, guys. Being responsible. Knowing what your obligations are and fulfilling them. That's where the hadith of guardianship comes in. Each and every one of us is a guardian over something. Okay, so what does that mean? Guardianship deals with accountability. Okay, so how do we hold ourselves accountable? By being responsible, by fulfilling our obligations. If you are a man, you have obligations you have to fulfill as a man. If you are a woman, there's obligations you have to fulfill as such, as a child, as a teacher, as a daya, as an imam, as a scholar. So how do we hold ourselves accountable? By knowing what our obligations are and fulfilling them. Does everyone understand? Good job, Anissa. Good job, Nicola. Good job um, uh, on that. It's all about obligations and guardianship. We're guardians of this earth. The believers are guardians over the mosque. The man is a guardian over his home, his family. The woman is a guardian over her husband's property and her children. Okay. All right. Good job. Any questions about any of those answers? And this is how we're going to do for this series. Every day I'm going to, before the, class, uh, the, the, the lecture, I'm going to give you a quiz like this. I'm going to give you a quiz like this before the lectures, just to see how well you guys understood what these personality traits are. And then I want you to work on applying them, work on being accountable. If you are a man, you should be accountable. If you're a woman, be accountable. You know, work on these things that we talked about. All right, any questions about those answers? Let me put the PowerPoint up on the screen because today we're gonna go over some more personality traits that we all need to work on. And by the way, I did uh, put, um, this stuff gets right in my way. I did put the, um, put this out the way. The PowerPoint link up on the um, Facebook thing. Okay, so I did make a PowerPoint slide thing. I figured out how to do it. So today is gonna be the second session of the Muslim personality. 
Again, you can order the book by going to atleyonline.com. The book is not there yet, but hopefully he'll put it up soon. Okay. And until then, just make sure you guys review the PowerPoint at the link I give, gave you and watch the video from every, every the recordings on YouTube. Okay, and this book is written by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli, and it's being uh, explained by me, Layla Nashiba. That's why you have both our pictures there. Okay, all right. So today we're going to continue speaking about the Muslim personality. And one of the features of the Muslim personality, uh-oh, see what happened? Uh, this is what happens when I hit that, trying to move this um, Zoom thing out the way. My Zoom box is in my way and I can't see. Let me try to hide myself there. Okay, there. Wait a minute, I can't move it? On Zoom, guys? Oh, I'll figure it out. Let me try it again. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, one of the features of the Muslim personality is that we make good use of our time. And we talked about this a little bit during the month of Ramadan. You don't want to squander your time. Remember, guys, Allah speaks about how this is one of the characteristics of the human being of man. Man is always lost when it comes to time. Somebody mute the people. Whoever's a moderator in there, please mute, mute, mute. I don't need no sounds on this recording. Please mute anybody that comes in there on their mic. Okay, Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, verily man is lost except those who believe in Allah and those who do good deeds and who recommends others to the truth and who performs the good deeds which Allah has ordained and who stays away from all sins and evil deeds that Allah has made forbidden. And the person is not lost who recommends others to patience. Okay, so again, guys, you know, this is something that we need to incorporate into the Muslim personality, making good use of our time. How do you spend your time as a Muslim? By doing the deeds that are pleasing to Allah, such as commanding others to adhere to the truth, saving your soul and your family from the hellfire staying away from the practices that the Kafir do. Stop trying to blend in and be like them. Recommending one another, like you guys do in the Zoom room. I love how you sisters are here to help each other in the Zoom room, how you recommend each other, you know, to seek medical help, you know, how you support each other in your sufferings, how you support each other when, when in injuries and, and, and injustices have been done to you. And then I'll step in and preach the religion like I'm supposed to as a diet. This Zoom room is very, I mean, this Ramadan was a very spiritual Ramadan for me and, and, and everyone here in the Zoom. And I'm, I'm very proud to see how you sisters are good at that, you know, and joining the good and forbidding the evil with each other. Okay, this is a good use of time. A look at all the blessings you sisters and brothers are getting for advising each other to do good, for reminding each other to stay away from what is bad. Remember the prophet said the tongue should remain silent unless it's advising to do good, reminding to stay away from evil. So you sisters and brothers in this Zoom room, you guys put your tongue to good use coming in here. And I'm very proud of you for that. And that's a good sign that most of you guys have this personality trait. You guys make good use of your time. You don't squander it. Also, another personality trait that everyone needs to work on developing is devoutness. This is when I lose it. This is when you guys will see me as a dyer, as a teacher, as a friend, lose it. When I see a person's not devout, you know, subhanAllah, loyalty, 
Loyalty is everything in Islam. When we declare la ilaha hayalallah, Muhammad Dor, Rasulullah, this is the pledge of allegiance. We're pledging loyalty to Allah and we're pledging loyalty to the prophet Muhammad and we're pl pledging loyalty to all the believing Muslims on this earth. Loyalty, devoutness. Devoutness is just another a synonym for the English word loyalty. Loyalty is everything in Islam, guys, okay? If you are a true believer, you will be loyal to Allah. You will be loyal to the prophet. You will be loyal to this deen. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. It is he, Allah. It is he, Allah, who has sent down the book. And in it are verses that are entirely clear. And these verses are the foundations of the book. Okay? The prophet Muhammad goes on to tell us to explain this verse. He says the lawful and the unlawful are clear. However, you may not be aware of what the lawful and the unlawful things are. So you may be doubtful of something. If you come upon something in this religion that you are not sure of, then stay away from it until you learn the truth about it. How many of us do that? This is what ticked me off yesterday. Devoutness. You're gonna stay away from everything that Allah said is haram. You're gonna stay away from it. And if it's something that you're not sure about, you're not gonna go near it until you find out the truth. But when you find out the truth and learn the truth about it, you will never, ever, ever say, I'm gonna do it anyway. Is that the characteristic of the perfect Muslim character? No, guys, and it's something that we all have to work on. We have to all train our souls to submit. That's what Islam means, total submission to Allah. I don't care, you know, if I like it or not. I don't care what nobody else say. My allegiance is to Allah, the prophet. Allah didn't say I can do it, so I ain't doing it. I'm staying away from everything when it comes to worship because everything is haram in worship unless Allah said it. The simple fact that you guys cannot find no verse in the Quran that says celebrate a birthday. What does that mean? That means it's haram. The simple fact that you can't find no hadith on this planet where the prophet Muhammad told the people to celebrate his birthday. You're not gonna find no hadith from any of those over 300 companions that show that they used to wish each other happy birthday celebrate birthdays or any of that, that should tell you it's haram because when it comes to worship, everything is haram unless Allah said it. So why are we even discussing birthdays? I don't know. That's how twisted we are as a nation today. We're so busy being like those Kafirs, looking for the fun of this dunya. So one of the characteristics of the Islamic personality is I am devout and loyal to Allah, loyal to the prophet, loyal to the believers, and that's it. I'm not going to do anything that may bring about Allah's displeasure, Allah's anger, Allah's punishment. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there's a piece of flesh in the body. If it is healthy, then the whole body will be healthy. 
But if it is corrupt, the whole body will be corrupt. And that piece of flesh is the heart. And this is why I'm constantly reminding my students and myself, we have to constantly check our hearts, guys, to make sure our hearts are healthy. Because our personal gen, he never sleeps. He will whisper and have us saying things that we know we shouldn't say and doing things we shouldn't do. We got to constantly check that heart to make sure it's healthy. Because in the blink of an eye, it can become unhealthy. In the blink of an eye, you can die. And you don't want to wake up with all your good deeds gone, the bankrupt person because you got too caught up in the life of this world or you were too arrogant to accept that you are wrong about something okay especially when it comes to worship everything is haram when it comes to worship unless a law says otherwise okay all right so being devout this is a personality trait that we all as muslims need to develop and once you develop that devoutness to Allah, that devoutness to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that devoutness to this religion, then the next personality trait comes easily. And this is to be a mirror, a mirror or a reflection to your brothers and sisters in faith. For those of you who are loyal, for those of you who are devout, you are the most beautiful reflections I have ever seen. As a Daya, you know, I can look and tell, you know, who's devout and who's not, you know, cause my God, look at these people. Remember guys, Allah says in the Quran, in the interpretation, the meaning, the believers are nothing but brothers to one another. So make reconciliation between your brothers and fear of law. What does that mean? Allah is telling us that the true believer doesn't hold grudges. If you're a Muslim and you walk around holding grudges, I can tell you one person on this website who never holds a grudge, Umi Beryl. Umi Beryl. I think she's probably the most forgiving person I ever met. She doesn't hold a grudge. She's a mirror. She's a mirror to her brothers and sisters. How many of you can say that? How many of you can say that you don't hold a grudge? I know some of you here get mad and what's the first thing you say? I'm mad at you. So I'm gonna take three days. First of all, the prophet didn't say that. The prophet didn't say that a Muslim is entitled to three days when they mad. In fact, he said the opposite. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said a believer would never, ever, ever abandon his brother or sister in Islam, not even for one day. Subhanallah. Allah. But some of us, you know, you know, we get it twisted. We hold grudges. You get mad because something that you said was wrong or somebody gave you an answer you didn't want to hear or somebody made you mad. It's something I had to work on too when I was young. I used to hold grudges really bad. I come from a family that holds grudges. God Allah, especially when I learned the history of them. Oh my God. But alhamdulillah, I don't hold them like that no more. Okay. We have to free ourselves of holding grudges, guys, because this is how shaitan dupes us, because a shaitan knows that Allah said any Muslim that dies holding a grudge against his brother or sister in Islam will never enter paradise. And like I said earlier, the blink of an eye, your life can end. A lot of us don't get that, that opportunity to make right the wrongs we've done in three months. We end up in the blink of an eye in our grave and we done held a grudge against another Muslim. We were mad at another Muslim. Imagine how many Muslims are gonna be in the hellfire as a result of that. Remember the prophet said, there'll be more people in hell than paradise. You see how easy it is to get to hell? The road to hell is easy. It's the road to paradise that's hard guys. We have to become mirrors to one another. Do unto others the way you want them to do unto you. We don't go around holding anger and grudges. 
The believer, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said the believer is a mirror of his brother and he protects him against loss and he defends him behind his back. Don't get angry at me because I have to admonish you for something stupid you said out your mouth. Thank me. Thank me for admonishing you so you can clean it up before death comes knocking on your door. And the same for me. You hear me say something stupid? Admonish me. Because that's what we're supposed to do as brothers and sisters. But we don't go around, you know, holding grudges and getting angry over nothing. Okay? That's not part of the Muslim personality. And again, that leads to the next uh, uh, component in joining the good and forbidding the evil. The true Muslim knows that that's what we're here for. Our purpose, we were created to worship Allah. We were put here on this earth to prove to Allah how we believe in him. So we live each day of our lives enjoining what is good and forbidding what is evil. Remember, Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, true believers and real followers of the Sunnah, they are the best of all people. Why? Because they enjoin the good and they forbid the evil. So why are you mad at your brothers and sisters in Islam and holding grudges against them because they're telling you what you need to correct about yourself? Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever amongst you witnesses wrongdoing, let him change it with his hand. And if he's unable to do so with his hand, then change it with his tongue. I and mean, then if he's unable to do that, then make do it for the person. That's how you change it with your heart. So again, guys, this is what sets us apart from the Christians and the Jews, the fact that we're mirrors unto each other, the fact that we're supposed to love each other, the fact that we're supposed to advise one another, the fact that we're supposed to remind each other and take that negativity out the door, that arrogance out the door, okay? Also, another component of the Muslim personality is that he or she minds their own business. What does that mean? We don't go around sticking our nose in issues that don't concern us. I'm not talking about helping each other. I'm not talking about enjoining and forbidding. I'm talking about just being plain nosy. Remember, Allah tells us, in the interpretation of the meaning, O oh, you who believe, avoid suspicion because some suspicion is sin. And don't go around spying on each other or backbiting each other. Would you like to eat the flesh of your dead brother? You would hate it. Instead, fear Allah. So it's none of your business. Some things are just too personal. If a person's not coming to you seeking help or support, it ain't upon you to go spy on them to try to figure out what's going on in their life. But unfortunately, we got a lot of Muslim women and men who do that. You rather go spy on me to try to find dirt on me because I'm not coming to you with my issues. This is haram. That's not part of our character. If you come to me seeking advice, you come to me seeking help, I'll be here to help you, advise you. But I'm not gonna go knocking down doors trying to figure out what's going on with her, what he doing, what, what they doing. Who that, Seely? Who that, Seely? I'm not doing that, okay? Also, the Muslim personality is one that does everything in life for the sake of Allah. Everything we do is for Allah. Remember, Allah tells us in the interpretation of the meaning, if your sons, your fathers, your brothers, your wives, your relatives, your money, 
and the homes you live in are dearer to you than Allah and the prophet, then wait until Allah brings about his punishment. Supana Allah. Remember guys, this is why we have to be moderate. We talked yesterday about how one of the components of the Muslim personality is to be moderate in our love. Some of us love our children more than we do a lot. That's why we end up celebrating birthdays, which is haram. Some of us love our husbands, our wives more than a lot. We love our homes, our property, our Louis Vuitton more than a law. We have to be careful of this, guys. Everything has to be moderately balanced. So that way we can uh, strike the distance when we have to. Everything should be within moderation. So if I have to admonish this person, I can. And or if that person has to admonish me, I'll accept it. I won't take it personal. A lot of us take things personal because we're not balanced. We take things personal because we don't, we don't live our lives doing for the sake of Allah. We have to put Allah first and foremost. Everything we do, why am I sitting here doing these lectures? I'm doing these classes for the sake of Allah. Why am I working every day? I'm doing it for the sake of Allah so I can provide for myself because Allah commands me to go out and work rather than bathe. Okay? So everything we do, we do for the sake of Allah. That should be a component of the Muslim personality. And once you reach that level where you're doing for the sake of Allah, the next component comes easy, and that is repentance. The believer is constantly returning back to repentance because none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes sometimes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the believer and his faith are like a horse tethered to a stake. The horse can walk around and wonder, but he ultimately returns back to that stake. And that's how the believer is. Sometimes the believer becomes negligent and he might stop doing what he's supposed to do, but he's quick to catch himself and go back to faith. That's called jihad of nafs. We're constantly fighting with ourselves. Sometimes we pray our prayers early. Then other times we wait to the last minute. But then other times we go back to praying them like we should. We're like that. It's a push and pull, a push and pull with the believer. The believer is constantly returning back, returning back, returning back to Allah through repentance. Okay? This is a personality trait that all of us need to have. And also, the Muslim personality is one that is truthful, even when joking. And this is how I, as a dyer, lose people. I joke a lot. You guys know me. You guys know you hang out with me in the Zoom room. I'm a very jokeful person. I joke and tease and play with Sabrine. I joke with me and Latifah. Me and Latifah have joked and played since I was 15 years old. I joke around with Fresno. Oh, crazy Fresno! Yep. We joke a lot, but one thing about my jokes, I'm always joking with the truth. I joke with big mouth, but it's always with the truth. Okay, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, woe to the person, woe to the person, woe to the person who says words and speaks falsely just to get a laugh from the people. Woe to him. So we can joke and have a good sense of humor as Muslims, just make sure we joke with the truth. We don't want to joke in a hurtful way about something that can hurt someone or demean someone. We don't want to do that. Okay. And finally, the Muslim personality is one in which he or she takes their sins seriously. Again, the prophet said, beware of the minor sins. The likeness of minor sins is, like, is that some people will sit under the bottom of a valley 
One of them brings a twig, another brings another twig until they build a fire so big that they can bake their bread. The minor sins will destroy the sinner and he's held accountable for them because the minor sins add up. We, you may think is something little, but in the sight of Allah, it could be something big, like that birthday crap. Y'all may think it's not a big deal to say happy birthday, but Allah says in the Quran, support each other and encourage each other to do what is good. He said, do not support each other in what is evil. By you telling people happy birthday, guys, I'm sorry. You're telling them that it's okay to associate partners with Allah. You're telling them it's okay to take to think that because they were born, it's worth being praised for. When the prophet said, don't do that, he said, do not do what the Christians did to my brother Jesus. Look what they did to Jesus, and you Muslims are doing it to each other. It may seem like something minor to you, but in the sight of Allah, it's a big deal. So again, to be a true believer, we have to make sure that our personality is one that takes sins seriously. I don't care how minor a sin you may think it is. We take all sins seriously because every sin is an act of disobedience to Allah. And as Muslims, you do not want to disobey Allah. Okay? So we're going to stop right here for today. Tomorrow, we're going to go over some more uh, personality traits that we need to work on developing. And like I said, this class is the perfect class since we have are, have are at the end of Ramadan, because we need to keep on evolving, keep evolving to become the best believing Muslim that we can be. All right, I'm going to stop right here. Supana kala huma wa biham dika, a shadow on laila haila anta, a stock wa tubu ilaik. Are there any questions or comments? 